The Mini Pro TL866 Universal Programmer. Hello, Mindflare Retro back with some more tool talk. And this time we're talking about the Mini Pro TL866 High Performance USB IC Programmer. And to make things really exciting, we're going to mod it by enabling its in circuit serial programming, which is dormant on the model that I have. So this little gizmo has actually been around since 2010. Uh, it's designed and manufactured by the Haikuu Jingong Electric Company in China. And wisely, they go by XG Auto Electric, for those of us in the West that get tongue-tied with those names. The TL866 is probably the most popular IC programmer out there right now, firstly because of the price, and secondly because it's so capable. At the time of making this video, it can recognize and program over 14,000 different ICs. That's impressive. The TL866 is available in two flavors, the CS version, the standard version, and the A version, which includes in-circuit serial programming. Now, depending on what region of the world you're in, there can be a significant price difference between the standard CS version and the more advanced A version with the ICSP port. You can see here on my CS version that it actually has a plug blocking the ICSP header port. And that port is open with a header on the A version. So part one and today's mission is to update the firmware from CS to A. First, a little background. Back in February of 2014 on the EEV blog forums, a member named Radio Man contributed some very interesting information he had completely reverse engineered the TL-866, including schematics, and also had written a TL-866 firmware update program. I'll post the forum link in the comments. So even though Radio Man's documentation is exceptionally thorough, it wasn't until I found a thread on Atari Age forum where member Kyle22 filtered everything down to a very simple step-by-step -step procedure for updating the firmware from CS to A. I'm going to be using Kyle22's simplified update procedure here, so let's get started. First we need to go to the Atari Age forums where the procedure is posted. And here we are, it is titled MiniPro TL866 Upgrade Instructions. And as you can see, very simple steps, 1 through 14, it's actually 1 through 13 because the last step is have fun. I'm going to keep this web page handy for reference, but the first thing we want to do is download the TL866.zip file. This zip file contains Radio Man's firmware update program and the required version A image. Next, I also want to download the latest version of the TL866 programmer software. So this is the application software from the manufacturer, so I'm going to go to their website click on the link and download version 6.60. Again, I'll post a link in the comments to all these websites. Okay, so I've downloaded two files to my computer. One is the MiniPro TL866 application software from the manufacturer. Current version is 6.60. The other file is the TL866A zip file from Atari Age, and that contains the firmware update software and some other supporting files. So let's extract both these to this folder and see what we have. Now keep in mind I'm installing this from scratch on this computer. This computer has not had any TL866 software or USB drivers installed on it before. So that's why I downloaded the latest version from the manufacturer's website. So if you already have the programming software installed, it's not a big deal. I'm just doing it from scratch. To avoid any confusion, we are interested in only these three files. The MiniPro programming software, not the version 617 that was in the Atari Age zip file, but the version 660 setup that we downloaded from the manufacturer's website. Also the TL866.exe firmware update program, and of course the firmware.hex which is the version A firmware image file. I'm going to start by installing the programmer software from the manufacturer. 
I'm not going to show the whole installation process. It is a standard Windows installation, but it does have one little quirk that I recommend you fix. By default, it wants to install the software to your D drive. That's unusual because in most cases, the D drive is the DVD burner on your computer, just like it is on this computer. So what I'm doing is manually selecting the installation folder that I want, which will be under C program files in a mini pro subfolder. Okay, people, big fat disclaimer time. Flash your own TL-866 at your own risk. If something goes wrong during a flash procedure, you could brick your device, rendering it completely useless. I take no responsibility for any damage caused by performing what you see done here in this video. Now that the Mini Pro Programmer software is successfully installed, we can start following the steps to update the firmware. The software is displaying no device on the bottom status bar. That's not a problem because I haven't plugged it in yet. Step 1 and 2 are complete. Okay, so far so simple. We've completed steps 1 and 2 and we're on to step 3. Run the programmer software and check the version. And yes, we are running the CS version. Next, step 4. Exit the programmer software. Programmer software is closed. Step 5. Run the TL866.exe firmware updater. That's Radio Man's program that we downloaded from Atari Age. So double click that and it opens up. Step 6. Browse for and select the update.dat file in the install directory. And this is exactly why at the beginning I installed the software to program files so we could find it easily. So update.dat. There it is. Click open. Step 7. Select firmware dumper radio button and click reflash button. Okay, so third radio button down is firmware dumper and now we are going to click the reflash button. And of course we get a warning message. Warning! This operation will reflash the device. Do you want to continue? Yes, we want to continue. So it's not entirely clear to me what's happening during this step. We're flashing the update.dat file that is included with the program installation to the device. And if I look at Radio Man's instructions on the EEB blog forum, it says, now a custom firmware will be programmed onto the device. The advanced button will now become available. I'm not sure why the manufacturer includes the update.dat file in their installation. But in flashing it to the device, we now have access to bootloader options. So, step 8. Under the bootloader options section, click on A bootloader as opposed to CS bootloader and click the right button. Again, we get a warning. Yes, we want to continue. Bootloader was successfully written. Step 9. Uncheck the code protection bit setting and click the right button. Code protection bit was successfully written. Step 10. Click OK to exit the advanced settings dialog box. OK. And select TL866A firmware and click reflash. Okay, so TL866A is selected and we're clicking reflash. A warning. Device status shows waiting for update. Erasing. And writing. Reflash? Okay. Phew. Reflashing is always the scary part, because if something goes wrong during that moment, you can brick the whole thing. Okay, step 11. After the reflash, click the reset button, wait, and then click the reset button again. Okay, we're going to click the refresh button once. The device status indicates waiting for update. And now we're supposed to wait a little bit, and press the reset button again. Device status now says normal working mode, and that's what I like to hear. 
And step 12, exit the TL866.exe firmware updater program, no problem. Step 13, run the programmer software and check the version. It should be A. And presto changeo, we are now running a Mini Pro TL866A. Very nice. And to confirm this, if we open the help about window, Yes, our Mini Pro Universal Programmer is now model TL866 version A. Well, that went really well. Using just two small download files and a very simple step by step procedure list, we were able to convert this Mini Pro TL866CS to the A version in just a few minutes. But of course, we're not done quite yet. Even though we've updated the firmware to enable in circuit serial programming, we still need to add a serial header, and we know where it goes. That embossed cap is taunting me. And again, I perform this firmware flash modification knowing the risks. So if you're uncomfortable or uneasy about doing this with your own equipment, then don't. It's just not worth the risk. You don't want to end up bricking your TL-866 unless you're looking for a really fancy paperweight. I hope you enjoyed this video, part one of the Mini Pro TL866A upgrade from the standard CS version to the A version. And stay tuned for part two, where we finalize this modification by adding the serial port header. I'd like to take a moment to thank all my subscribers. In particular, a lot of recent subscribers. I had quite a flurry after my last video and finally broke 100 subscribers. Wow, I'm in the big leagues now. Thanks very much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. Please feel free to rate and comment. I always enjoy that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And see you soon.